George, George here now. <clears throat> Well, I'll just say something briefly about what I like to write about. <clears throat> Someone asked me, where does my inspiration come from? Does it come from life? Does it come from literature? Of course, it comes from both. And in my case, I'll add painting, film, dance, and theater. My book, Frida, Paint Me as a Volcano, is very painterly. Blue, the Derek Jarman poems, is painterly and filmic. And Children of Ararat, which is a very personal book, a uh, disturbing book, as an entire section devoted to artistic creators of literature, film, and painting. But all the books I've written on poetry particularly are provoked by my responses to life. I'm very empathetic to the marginalized, the oppressed, the exploited, and the outcast. I'm affected by the horrible injustices of the present world, by the arrogance of superpowers and their satellites, and by the deniers of historical atrocities. I write to commemorate and interrogate literature and life, though I don't think of a poet as necessarily being an unacknowledged legislator of the world. I'm very in uh, interested in personae, how writers, uh, and of course of writing, adopt personae, which is what I do, uh, often using the first person voice. Uh, and someone pointed out it's the paradox of a mask, because when you think of a mask, you think of it being a deception. But not necessarily, because if I'm trying to enter the psyche of someone else, I'm really trying to burrow into another identity. Why? In order to see parallels or expressions or explanations of my own psyche. So therefore, in this book, George and Alfred, I burrow into the psyches of both these wonderful artists. She was 23 years younger than him. A uh, great painter, whereas he was the great photographer. Um, and the book is more or less structured in the way of a photo album, uh, where the poet you know, speaks as the album, as it were. But you do hear Georgia speaking in my imagined voice of Georgia O'Keeffe. And sometimes you get Alfred speaking as well, although in the case of Alfred, I've really turned a lot to actual documents, letters, diaries, etc. Um, let me start with, um, well, let's start with Georgia. I, I've actually seen and heard Georgia O'Keeffe on YouTube, and she's very plain spoken, uh, and so it, the idea came to me to write this poem, Words Are Strangers to Me. And again, there are lots of quotations from the, in the poem from her letters to different people. Words and I are not good friends, except with some people. Counterfeits are what sprout in my mind. Stand and leaf, calyx and corolla, cliff skulls, sheens of shape have subtle possibilities for my brush. Words would guillotine them. Sometimes what I need to say takes more than a whole wall. When I sit on the floor and try to get it onto a sheet of charcoal paper, all I have are marks, just marks, and cramped feet. <laughs> uh, Albert, as I said, was 12, 23 years older than her, and he had been married before to a woman who was a real neurotic, and it was a very incompatible relationship. They did have one child. But uh, as soon as he met, or actually, but as soon as he saw her art, he was, I think, in love with her. Uh, although their, their actual relationship started two or three years later than the first time he hung her paintings in his gallery in New York. So he photographed her very often nude, or with, with hands in different shapes. She didn't mind her being photographed nude by him, <laughs> as long as he didn't expose those photographs to public, to public gaze. So this is the poet speaking me, and it's called Album Lovemaking 1918. She's a purer form of him, both the queer team, his camera phallus stalking her head on a pillow, her nipples and lithe forms, swelling hips, naked feet, armpits, bones under the skin. He gestures nakedly in close-up, teasing, probing the life of her paws, her navel, Mons Veneris, 
the liquid moisture on her upper lip. His photos pay homage to remembered pleasures. They sing the body electric, savoring womanhood and all that is woman. Love looks, love perturbations and risings. Camera eye, a translation of blind touch to sight.